Welcome. Today, we're talking about the Science Olympiad event called Wind Power. And in particular, we're talking about test stands that we use in that event um, and creating your own test stand so that you can test your, your uh, wind power device at home. So the first question is, who is allowed to build this test stand? And, and the answer is anyone. We're talking about the test stands, not the device itself. And so there's no requirement that the competitors must build the test stand in the same way that competitors must build the device. Parents, coaches, other adults can, can work on this test stand. Uh, now, if, if building a test stand sounds like a, uh, a scary, daunting task, um, we, we do recognize that not everyone has tools and building know-how, and if this describes you, then uh, start out by talking to your coach to connect with uh, team parents, um, other folks on the team, um, and, and even students on the team, because most likely someone associated with your team does have the know-how and the tools to do this. Uh, you can also talk to your school's tech teacher. Um, so for instance, a tech teacher will often have uh, spare wood offcuts that you can um, choose from to, uh, to, to get some of the wooden pieces. Now, the, the Nationals website has on the wind power uh, event page, which is listed there uh, on the slide, has instructions and plans for a test stand. And this design is a, is a very good design. It's fully tournament worthy, um, but it's, it's not so easy to build. And here we are presenting a much simpler design that's very easy to build with just a few tools and supplies but I, I will caution you that this design that we present here is not robust or adjustable enough for use at a tournament. So if you are an event supervisor, you really want to be looking at that design that is on the, the Nationals website. Okay, let's talk about what you'll need. There's a few supplies. Um, you'll need a, a spindle wheel, which is... Uh, this black disc right here. You'll need a, a motor, which is the, the gray cylinder underneath it. And you'll need a resistor, which is pictured just above the spindle wheel. Um, and if you, if you uh, take a look at our understanding the testing setup video that accompanies this video, uh, we talk about choosing those and how do you find them online and so on, what exactly is important to look for in those components. So you'll want to have a look at that video. Um, you'll need a multimeter uh, and some clip-on leads. And again, we have a second video uh, that accompanies this one that talks about choosing a, a multimeter. So you'll want to take a look there. Um, then you'll need a couple pieces of wood. So a wooden base, that's this larger flat piece and uh, a wooden post. And we'll talk about the dimensions of those on the next slide. You'll need a large cable tie. Um, the, the one that I used here is about seven and a half inches long. And you'll want some carpenter's wood glue. In terms of tools, uh, you will need to cut the wood to size. I haven't shown uh, a saw because there are so many different types. You'll need a drill to drill a quarter inch hole. Uh, so a drill with a quarter inch bit and you'll want a, a soldering iron and some solder uh, as well. Okay, so I said we'd talk about the dimensions of the wood pieces. So you'll want a flat broad base and the example that I've shown here is a, is a piece of plywood about six inches by 12 inches. Um, and you'll need a post. Now for the post, I used a one by two that was about nine inches long. Um, and uh, a one by two is a, a standard size of lumber that you can pick up at, at any hardware store. Um, just know that 
in the same way that a two by four isn't really two inches by four inches, a one by two is actually three quarters inch thick by one and a half inches wide. Um, you can use bigger, so you could use a two by four, uh, but then you'll probably need a longer cable tie um, and you'll, you'll see why that is in a minute. Um, so you'll want to make sure that the post is longer than the maximum allowable radius of the blades in your wind power device. Uh, that's so that, so that the, the blades can swing freely and not bunk into anything. And, um, and other than that, the, the very specific dimensions of this are not, are not terribly important if you make it 10 inches long or eight and a half inches long or something, it's, it's, it'll be just fine. So let's talk about assembling the wooden pieces. Uh, the first step is to trim the wood to size. Um, and, and, and I say if necessary here, because uh, many woodworkers and tech teachers will keep a, a collection of scraps from prior projects. And if you uh, talk to one of those people, you may be able to find what you need already a good size. Um, these two pieces of wood that I've shown pictured here came out of my scrap collection, and I didn't have to cut them, uh, which was kind of handy. But uh, but if if you don't find happen to find things just the right size, you may need to cut a one by two to length, or maybe trim a trim a piece of plywood to a reasonable size. Uh, the second step is to drill a quarter inch hole in the top corner of the post, and you can see that hole right here, um, and uh, it should be about. It should be a quarter inch diameter, but it should also be about a quarter of an inch from the top and a quarter of an inch from one edge, approximately. Um, and then once you've drilled the hole, the final step is to glue these two together. Uh, you're going to want to glue the post upright uh, near an edge of the base, um, and you'll want the hole facing forward. So you want the hole close to the edge of the base. Um, and then, you know, in terms of glue, uh, carpentered wood glue is, is an absolutely wonderful kind of glue to use for this. You, you can use uh, epoxy or Gorilla Glue. Those will work also. But it's important not to use hot glue. Hot glue is wonderful for crafts, but it's structural its strength is very poor and it will not hold this together very well. So once your glue is dry, then it's time to assemble the motor. And um, you can see how I've done that from the picture here. Um, I've just kind of perched the motor on the edge of the, uh, the post above the hole and then I just wrap the cable tie through to hold the motor on there. You're going to want to make sure you tighten that cable tie uh, quite tight because that's what's really going to hold this thing together. Um, and you're going to want to make sure that the, the motor is flush with this edge so that the spindle wheel is projecting out over the front edge. Uh, and that'll make sure that your blades will have plenty of clearance to spin. And then once you've got it together, uh, go back and see if you can make that cable tie even tighter because that's really important to the structural uh, strength of your of your of your test stand. Okay, now it's time to talk about putting the electrical bits together. Um, this is a little bit tricky, but I I think I've I've outlined a, a pretty straightforward procedure for you to follow here. So. Um, the first thing is that you want to lay out the motor leads and the resistor on a backing material. And I used an, an old uh, dish scrubbing sponge. Uh, a, a scrap of wood would also work uh, as well. Um, but I've, I've taken that sponge here. That's this blue sort of fuzzy looking thing. Um, and I, I started out by just taping it to the post so that the two of them were firmly held together using masking tape. And then I taped down 
the um, the I laid the the resistor across it. This thing right here is the resistor with its two leads sticking out to the left and to the right. And then I laid the the leads of the motor, which are this red wire coming down here under the tape. And you can see it's poking out right here. Uh, and I laid it so that its metal is against the metal of the of the, res the resistor lead. And then the other motor lead is this black one, again, goes under the tape and comes out right here. You can see the end of it. Um, and, and then you're gonna just try and tape all that down so that the wires stay put and so that they are touching in both places here. That's very important that they're touching, but you don't wanna cover up the spots where they're touching because we're gonna solder there. Once you've got that all taped down, it's time to, to do the soldering. Now, why soldering? Uh, uh, there's, there's a couple of reasons for this. So one is that solder is an excellent electrical connection, um, but, but it's also because, um, you know, you might, you might think of trying to do an electrical connection by just twisting wires together, and that's possible, but it's difficult because the leads of these motors are tiny, tiny, thin wires, and the leads of the resistor are much thicker wires, and so they're very hard to twist together well. So I would, I would recommend uh, trying to solder. If you don't have a soldering iron, uh, your school probably has an electronics teacher who could help you out, um, or again, uh, someone else on the team or a parent of someone else on the team probably has a soldering iron that you could use. So how do, how do you go about soldering? Soldering is a little bit tricky, uh, but if you follow this procedure, you should do okay. What you want to do is you want to heat up the soldering iron first, get it preheated uh, three or five minutes, um, and then you're going to want to touch the solder. The solder is this thing that looks like a wire coming from the upper right. You're going to want to touch it to the place where two of the wires touch. So one of the wires is this one here. That's the black lead from the motor. The other wire is this, which is one of the resistor leads. And uh, I've touched the solder right where they touch. And then you want to touch the soldering iron to the wires just a tiny distance away from the solder, because what you want is you want that solder to melt on the wires. It, it doesn't help if it melts on the soldering iron. It has to melt onto the wires in order to make a good, a good electrical connection. So you're going to touch the soldering iron just a tiny distance away, and then you're going to wait for the solder to melt onto the wires and into that joint. And then you can just take away the solder and the soldering iron and you'll have a good joint. And you're going to do the other end, which is over here. Once you've, once you've uh, soldered those two joints and given it just a minute to, um, uh, to uh, cool off, then we're ready for our final steps. The, the first thing is you're going to want to remove the tape and the backing material, the, the sponge or the scrap of wood, uh, and, and uh, that will expose the, the two motor leads and the resistor like this in the picture in the upper right. Um, do that very, very carefully. Solder joints are not strong, so you want to be careful that you don't tear those apart um, when, you're, when you're taking off the tape. And then once you've exposed that, we're going to put some more tape on it, but this time just cover up the resistor and the solder joints so that you protect them and uh, you know tape them firmly to the wood so that you reinforce the whole assembly and just leave the ends of the resistor exposed so that you can clip your multimeter leads on uh, to those ends. And then at that point, your test stand is ready to go. Um, you can you can snap on your your propeller and uh, and 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 set up your fan and 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 test your device. Um, one thing to to remember this this particular test stand is not adjustable in in any way, um, and you are going to want to move your move your propeller around in front of the fan 
to adjust it uh, uh, to get the best possible um, uh, uh, coupling with the, the moving air uh, stream. So in order to do that, you're just going to boost up either the fan or the books or both on top of whatever things you've got handy, like books are, are, are a good choice uh, in order to adjust their relative heights. And that's all. So um, thanks for joining us and uh, check out our other, um, other videos on wind power and other events. You can check out our uh, VASO's website event pages for other resources and be sure to check out all of our other social media.